Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you join us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome, and we thank you for taking the time to be with us today. We invite you to get your Bible or get a notepad and pen and write down anything that God speaks to you about. Listen, I'm believing for God to say things to you that never come out of my mouth. Amen. We're believing for words that bring heaven to earth. And sometimes that just comes from God speaking something to your heart as you're listening to the word being taught. And so take note of those things because they're answers for your life. We've been teaching on the mind and I tell you what, but there's so much that is needs to be said and can be said about the mind and uh, really guarding the inheritance of a sound mind. A sound mind is our inheritance, but we have to protect that which he's made ours. Amen. We've been looking at, at, for our golden text, we've been looking at 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, and I want us to read it again today. What well, Paul wrote to Timothy, and he said, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Aren't you so thankful? Doesn't that just settle things down? When you're faced with something, just pull that out and meditate on that for a while. Rest on that, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us something. He's given us power. And we could say this, authority, anointing, all of those things are, are like things. God has given us power, love, look at this, and a sound mind. No, your mind will not be troubled the rest of your life. No, no, it does not have to be because that's not what God has authored for you. And I will say that it seems to me that sometimes so, so many people have lived with a troubled mind that to them that's normal, that they don't even really recognize what a peaceful mind is. But I tell you what, peace belongs to you. Yes. And so yes. once you get a taste of that peace, that is really to be the flow for the rest of your life. Yes. Amen. Yes. The Amplified Classic, when it describes a sound mind, it says it's a calm mind. Mm -hmm. It's a well-balanced mind. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a disciplined mind. It's a self-controlled mind. Mm -hmm. Now look, this word discipline means that we have to pay attention. Yes. Right. We have to right. pay attention to our thought life because mm -hmm. without even realizing it sometimes, you can let your mind go a certain direction and you've been in that direction for a day or for a week or mm -hmm. even longer before you recognize, what am I, what am I thinking about, you know? Yeah. Pay attention to your thought life yes. because yeah. to protect the, the flow of a sound mind, mm -hmm. we have to discipline our thought life. Yeah. And it does matter what we let, what we allow ourselves to touch on in our thought life. It does matter. Even if you never say it to somebody else, even if no one else knows what you're thinking, it does matter what you, what you touch in your thought life. It does matter. I said it does matter. Why? Because that's a place that you can open the door to the enemy is what you allow yourself to think on. Because if we allow a wrong way of thinking to persist, uh, it can become a habit mm -hmm. in our yes. thought life. Yes. It can become a habit. Yes. And the devil will energize a habit. Yeah. That's right. he'll, ta he'll just take advantage of that. Yeah. You know, really even complaining is just a bad habit mm -hmm. in the thought life. Okay. Uh, being critical, mm -hmm. a bad habit yes. in the thought life. Mm -hmm. um, murmuring, mm -hmm. grumbling, mm -hmm. just fault finding, right. being negative. It's a bad habit in the thought life. Yes. But uh, as we take on the thoughts of the word, it will help deal with that thought life. Amen. Amen. 
one of the things that we've been emphasizing in talking about the mind is knowing how to answer opposition. Mm -hmm. Because there are, there's going to come opposition and challenges to try to sway you out of the flow of a sound mind. Right. Fear is not the flow of a sound mind. That's right. Doubt, not the flow of a sound yes. mind. Worry, not the flow of a sound mind. And when we become skillful at recognizing these things and putting a stop to them in our thought life, we move into days of heaven on earth in our thinking yes. as well. Yes. Amen. Yes. Not being troubled. Yes. Another, one of the biggest, one of the most important things about staying out of those wrong flows is you have to recognize a wrong flow when it shows up. Yeah. Recognize yes. it. Yes. Wait a minute. I've been worrying. <laughs> How do you know if you're worrying? Well, Dad Hagen taught us this. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you're worrying? If you're thinking about it. Right. So anything that doesn't arrive you at peace, don't touch it in your thought life. Yes. Don't touch yes. it in your thought life. Now that doesn't mean to be unaware of what you need to have your faith on. Uh -huh. yeah. right. Amen. Right. If something's trying to trouble, your, trouble you in your thought life, get your faith in that direction. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, one of the biggest things that we have to do, as I said, we have to recognize wrong thoughts. Yeah. Why? So we'll close the door to them. What do we do when we recognize that a thought is wrong? We answer it. Yeah. Yes. You cannot outthink it. Listen, I've tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yes. And uh, we have to realize that uh, words cannot be stopped with thoughts. Mm -hmm. Amen. When the enemy speaks words, to your mind. You can't stop those words with thoughts. Even though they come to your thought life, those words come to your thought life. You, those words carry force and you have to employ force. You employ force of words. Amen. So when words come against your thought life, you pick up God's words and you speak those to those thoughts. And that's how you stop the force of wrong words as you put the force of right words Amen. in motion. Amen. Amen. Because you can know right thoughts, mm -hmm. but if you don't speak right thoughts, yeah. that's right. then you can be end, up, end up being troubled by wrong words. And so uh, we have God's words to arm ourselves with yes. and to disarm the suggestions, the threats of the enemy. Amen. Amen. Years ago, I was going through a particular test and, uh, oh my goodness, 25 years ago or so now. And uh, I, was in, I was endeavoring to do everything I knew to get through it. You know, that's what you do. Do all you know. But many times we need to know more. And so um, I had been taking my stand. I had been feeding on the word. I'd been confessing the word. I've been praying. I've been spending time praying in the spirit. And uh, I, I was doing everything I knew to do. And uh, you can tell if things are not taking any turn, any progress. It just kept going further and further in the wrong direction. And I remember saying this to God because one of the things I'm aware of is God cannot exercise the authority he's already given to me. Right. Yeah, that's right. So when he's yeah. given me authority, he doesn't have it anymore to use because right. he gave yeah. it to me. Right. Amen. The authority over my own life, yes. he gave to us, right? right. Yes. He gave the authority over your life, he gave to us. Yes. And so since he gave it to me, he doesn't have it to use because he handed it to me. Just like when Jesus said, I give you the keys, right. you say. And so I, I recognize that I cannot expect God to do what he's authorized me to do. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. God does his part, but I must do my part. Yes. And so I'm aware of that. And at that time, I was aware of that during that season of opposition, that test I was going through. But I, I just recognized I'm not, things are not changing. And I've been doing this for a while I'm talking like a year and a half. <laughs> Things are not changing. And I just went to God one day and I said, God, before I even, before I even talk to you about this, I said, I want to say to you, if I'm wrong in bringing this up to you, I want to know it because I'm not trying to be wrong in bringing it up. Yeah. 
But I said, I, I'm not asking you to do my part, but I said, I have been endeavoring to do all I know to stand in the face of this test and there's nothing, there's nothing changing. There's no progress. And I said, I don't know if it's right, but I'm gonna ask you, can you help me? Mm. Now, don't misunderstand me. I know he's our helper. Right. Yes. I know that. Right. But I didn't want him to think that I was asking him to do my part. Right. That's, that's the, basically the gist of what I was trying to yes. articulate to him. And I said, and if it's okay for me to ask you for further help with this, because I thought, well, maybe I'm just, it's just, I'm just not doing my part right. So there's nothing else to do until I do it right. But I said, if, if, I, if you would, would you help me with this? I didn't hear anything back. I just sat in that room where I was praying for a while and I didn't hear him say anything. Well, that night we had prayer at the church, so I, I go to pray. I'm leading in prayer that night. And I had done a bit of a teaching and exhortation before we prayed. And uh, so I said, okay, now we're going to take some time and pray. And so I was sitting in a chair in front of the congregation and I closed my eyes to pray. And the moment I closed my eyes to pray, I was in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to say that any other way than all of a sudden the spirit realm was more real to me than the natural realm. Yeah. I was in the spirit. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I had to praise my way there. Right. It wasn't like I, I, I confessed. Because you can, you can do things that set the atmosphere and you can go further into the, yes. into the flow of the spirit. Yes. And so instantly I was in another place in the spirit. And God spoke to me. He said, it was right for you to talk to me about this. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciated hearing that, you know, um, because he said, if you'll remember, Paul asked me three times mm -hmm. about a spirit that was buffeting right. him. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, he talked to me about it three yes. times. Yes. And he said, and I gave him his answer in that. So he said, so it was all right for you to talk to me. It's not you shifting your, your responsibility to me to talk to me about it. Right. Yeah. Because that was my concern. I didn't want to appear as though I'm shifting my responsibility to him. And so he said, so it was right for you to talk to me. He said, I cannot do your part, but I can do my part. And in this situation, my part is to put you in the spirit. And he said, now from that place in the spirit, answer it. Now, see, then he showed me my answer. Yeah, yeah. This is where I was missing it. I was from the mental arena answering it. Mm -hmm. I needed to be connected to my heart more. That's what he's telling me. You're answering these things mentally, and that's why it's seeming to have no, no effect. You're making no progress because you're mentally agreeing with the word. You're mentally answering these things with scripture, but they're not coming from the place of your heart. And he said, so my help to you is to put you in the spirit. Now you're in the place where life flows from. Now you answer it. And he said, now tell that spirit that's been troubling you to, to, to desist in its maneuvers against you. Yes. And I did, and that was the end of that test. Yes. So what am I saying to you when we answer it? It's not from just mental things. Right. Take time to get connected to your heart. Yes. Take time to get connected to your spirit. And God taught me that day. Now I'll know. It's not just about doing everything I know. It's being in the place yes. that works. Yes. Yes. It, when you're connected to your heart, you mean it. Yeah. Um, when you're connected to your heart, you're also connected to your faith because your faith is in your spirit. Yes. See, you can answer things all day long out of the, out, out of the mental arena, but there's no faith in your mind. Right. Now, don't misunderstand me. You can renew your mind to have faith thoughts, mm -hmm. but the source of faith is not in the mind. It's in your spirit. Yes. Yes. Amen. And so this is where I was missing it. I was answering it purely from a mental standpoint. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Amen. So when I teach you about answering it, because that's what we've been teaching on, uh, what I want you to understand is take time to get in the spirit. Yes. Take yes. time to get your heart, mm -hmm. to get connected to your heart, to get your tongue 
hooked up to your heart. Yes. Yes. You yes. say, Pastor Nancy, I don't quite understand what you mean. Well, you know what? You just have to stay around the teaching more to get more That's of right. it. The more, you know, the first time I remember the first time I went to first grade and the first day of school. Now, see, back then we didn't have kindergarten, or at least in our little town, we didn't have kindergarten. There's only like a couple hundred people in our town. So we did not have the luxury of uh, preschool. And uh, playing outside was our preschool, <laughs> playing at home, you know. And so uh, I remember the first day of first grade, the teacher said, open your book. And she said, okay, I want you to read. Well, you know what my response was? I was five when I was in first grade. I had not yet had my birthday. So I was the youngest in the class. And so I was five years old. So I thought everybody knows how to read. She's told them to open their books and told them to, to start reading. I'm going, they know how to read. I don't know how to read. She doesn't know I don't know how to read. So I just started crying. <laughs> As that first grader, I just sat there and cried. And every day for the first couple of weeks when she'd say, open your book and we're going to read, I started crying because <laughs> doesn't she know I don't know how to read? <laughs> Oh, I thought everybody in there knew how to read. But there was a day of a t keeping attending school that I quit crying because I learned. Yeah. I learned. And spiritual things are much the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you hear something the first time you don't quite get it. That's okay. We're all growing. Yeah. We're all developing. Yeah. Just keep listening and things will begin to dawn on you as you have more experience in, in hearing the word. Amen. 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 So if you say, I don't know what you mean by by getting hooked up to your heart. Well, all I know is this, is that when you mean it, yeah. mm -hmm. when you mean yes. it, yes. Amen. amen, then you're saying things from your spirit, yeah. from your heart. Yeah. Yeah. It can't just be something you're sloughing off right. out of right. what you know, yes. but it's something that has landed in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the best illustration is if you ever tell somebody that you love them. Did you mean it? Whether it's a spouse, whether it's a family member, where it, whether it's a relative, whoever. If, if you ever told someone that you loved them, did you mean it? Mm -hmm. Well, that came from your heart. Or were you just dating someone and you really didn't mean it, but you just liked having a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you wanted to keep them around, you know? <laughs> and so you said it, but you really, on the inside of you, you don't love them. But you say that because you want to have a date Friday night, you know, or something, <laughs> you know, because there are people that will say it and not mean it, right? right? That's the difference is that when it's meant, Amen. when it's meant. Amen. And when you speak the word and you mean it, it's going to have an effect. Yes. Like when you speak it and you yes. don't even, you don't even give a thought to it. Yeah. Amen. 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 And so uh, what the word calls for us is for us to live out of our heart. Yes. We're spirit yes. people. Yes. Amen. Spirit we, people. we are a spirit. Yes. We are a spirit. Yes. That's the feature of us that's most like God is we're yes. spirit beings and he is a spirit. Yes. We have a body. We have a, a soul which is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we live in a body, but we are a spirit. Yes. So as we learn to say things from our spirit... That's when things are going to hit the target. Yeah. Amen. Now, let me tell you one of the best ways to connect your spirit is start praising mm -hmm. and worshiping. Yes. That is one of the best ways to get your, to get your tongue hooked up to your heart. Mm -hmm. yes. That you're not just saying things mentally, mm -hmm. but you begin to say them from your heart, mm -hmm. praising God and worshiping God. Amen. Now, there may be times that some people, because I've been there, when you're so entrenched in that mental arena. Why? Because there's such opposition. There's so much commotion coming against the mind. So many thoughts bombarding the mind. That's the enemy's strategy is to draw you to that mental arena and hold you there. Because as long as you answer just from the mental arena, it misses the target. No matter that it is a, a scripture, it misses the target. It's got to have life connected to it. It's got to have faith connected to it. And that's when it comes out of your spirit. And so the enemy will try to create all this commotion, mm -hmm. right. the, the threats, the suggestions, the bombarding to hold you out of the flow of faith, out of the flow of your spirit. Yes. Praising God steals the avenger is what the words, it, it calm, it quiets all that's going on. 
Now, there have been times, though, when I have been, in years past, so mentally entrenched in something mm -hmm. that I would start praising, and it just seemed dead. Uh -huh. It just seemed lifeless. Yeah. That's okay. Keep doing it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Keep That's right. doing it. That's right. Because if you do it long enough, it'll start registering on your spirit. Yes. You'll start getting yourself, your tongue connected to your spirit. Yes. You might say, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And you might be being so uh, harassed, troubled up here. And it just seems like it's just lifeless. That's okay. Keep saying it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the enemy, listen, at times when I've gone through that, the enemy would say, Praising is not going to change your situation. Right. Yeah. Right. Ignore him. He's so afraid yes, because now you're getting on the road that leads you to victory. Right. 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 And he wants you to think praising is not enough, right. but praise brings the anointing. Yes. And the anointing destroys the yoke. That's why the enemy downplays, it, downplays the place of praise. For you to say praise the Lord in the face of tragedy, in the face of emergency, in the face of crisis, in the face of, of great temptation. He wants, and you start saying praise the Lord, he wants you to think that's not enough. And what he knows is that's more than enough to bring the anointing in the manifestation. I don't care if you have to do it all day. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you right. have to do it all week. Right. I don't care if you have to do it all month and it seems lifeless to you. Keep saying, praise the Lord. I worship you, Father. I worship you. I worship you. All of a sudden, you'll find yourself, you're not drawn up here anymore. You're drawn down here. And that's what God did for me that day when I prayed to him about that test. And he says, I can put you in the spirit. What did he do? By his divine help, he helped me connect to my heart. Yes. Just like that. But we can live that way. We don't have to ever get away from our hearts. And we're just entrenched in the mind, in the mental arena. Amen. Amen. And so uh, this is one important component to answering that we answer from a place of faith. Yes. We answer from our spirit. Before you start praying and asking and requesting things of God, take time to get connected to your heart. Yes. Yes. Take good. time. Mm -hmm. Take time. And how you do that? Well, spend time praising God. Spend time worshiping God. It will draw you away from the mental arena where Satan is, that is his battleground. And it'll draw you to the faith arena, which is where the greater one flows from. Amen. 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 To your spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we have to realize that it's up to us yes. to turn toward our spirits. Mm -hmm. And the more we do that, the quicker we can, if I could say this, get, get our, our tongues connected to yes. our spirits. Amen. 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 Why do you think that in nearly every church service you attend, they start with praise and worship? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. There's a reason in our church mm -hmm. that nearly every time we start mm -hmm. a service, we start with praise and worship. Yes. Why? We're giving the people a chance yes. to come out of the busyness of the day, yes. from the distractions of the day, mm -hmm. and, re and, and redirect their focus. Yes. Yes. That's good. Amen. Praising God turns your attention towards him and off of your circumstances, yes. off of what's opposing you, yes. off of what's trying to trouble you. Yes. Praising God turns you toward the source of your help. Yes. Oh. Amen. 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 And that's why we start church services praising and worshiping yes. God because yes. we know if we can get the people connected to their heart, then when they hear the word preached and taught, it has a better chance of going into their heart because they're not just sitting there conducting their life out of their minds. Right. They're focused on God yeah. instead of just Amen. focused on what the activities, the mental activities of the day. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you when you're needing something from God, before you start confessing the word, mm -hmm. and confession is such an important part of the word, but before you do, take time to get your tongue connected to your spirit, yes. not just to your mind. Right. Praising yeah. God does that. Yes. Amen. 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 Now, we've been talking about our, our, our uh, authority and our skill with answering it. So this, the, the steps and taking previous episodes, because if you haven't watched, you, you would need to watch some of the previous episodes. In a, in a time of testing, in a time of opposition, 
there are steps that faith will take. Yes. Yes. Amen. There are steps uh -huh. and that you can arrive at the right place every time you take those yeah. steps. Why? Because yeah. it's the law of faith. Yeah. It's a law. Right. It's a law. Amen. Number one, whenever you're faced with opposition, whenever thoughts try to trouble your mind, mm -hmm. answer them. Mm -hmm. And you don't just answer them generally, you answer them specifically. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Give a specific yes. answer. Yes. Number two, you tell the spirit that's troubling you to leave. The, to leave. Yes. You don't have to put up that's with something right. just in your life troubling right. and harassing that's right. your mind. That's right. That's right. You're not his victim. No. Right. Amen. 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 Number three is you praise. Yes. Not only will praise keep you connected to your heart, it keeps your attention from going back to what the devil suggested. Right. And yes. that's yes. huge yes. To, yes. to walking yes. free from that which is trying to trouble you. Get your attention off of it. Yes. Get your attention off of Amen. it. And I want to pray right now for those of you who say, Pastor Nancy, my mind's been troubled. My mind's been harassed. I've been depressed. I've been oppressed. Mm -hmm. Some may even be, have been on medication just to deal with it. I tell you what, there's help for you. Yes. No, your mind will not have to be that way the rest of your life. No, it won't. You can take these things that are taught in the, in the word and the things that I'm showing, the things that I'm sharing and become a doer of that. And I guarantee you, you will arrive at victory every single time. Yes. But you may need help. You say, Pastor Nancy, I need help getting there. Yes. Well, we bring our help. That's why That's we're right. here today to join our faith with you. And I speak, Satan, you take your hand yes. off of God's property in Jesus name. You take your hand off their minds. Depression, you leave them. Oppression, you leave them. Torment, you leave them. Fear, you leave them leave them. Worry, you leave them. Doubt, you leave them. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, be free. And right where you're at, say, thank you, Father, that I'm free. Thank you, Father, that I'm free. Thank you that I'm free. And you just keep praising and you keep praising. And even though thoughts may try to trouble your mind again, you just keep praising and you keep praising because you are free. You're not trying to get free. Amen. These are some of the things that we're teaching out of our Answer It book. We want you to get your copy. Go to DufresneMinistries.org and let us know you want your copy and we'll send that out to you. Until next time, remember, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Colossians tells us that Jesus spoiled, defeated, and stripped Satan in his total conquest and victory over him. The timeless truths in this book, Answer It, reveal how to answer every opposition and the steps to take to exit times of testing. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.